as if there weren't enough at stake already. Voter ID laws are at the center of a lot of the debate. Democrats are complaining that, for the most part, changes enacted by several states are designed to hurt their turnout. Republicans disagree. Our senior investigative correspondent, Drew Griffin, tonight investigates. On the Standing Rock Reservation in North Dakota, Terry Yellowfat, for years, voted with an ID with no address. In fact, he didn't know his street address. He knew his post office box, and that was enough until now. I have no idea why they want a physical address. The post office box always worked. Hey, and welcome to Andrew Says. Thanks for tuning in. I wouldn't lie to you, except for me this once. Hey, consider subscribing or hitting that bell up in whichever corner this is, even though that probably doesn't mean anything anyways. So voter fraud happens, as you probably can guess, and whether you think it's a left-wing thing or a right-wing thing, it does happen. There's somewhere between 11 and 22 million um, illegal, illegal aliens in the United States, depending on which statistic that you believe. The latest one actually said 22 million. I don't think it's an epidemic, the voter fraud thing, but it still happens, and to deny it, I think, would be silly. A North Dakota law passed last year and upheld by the Supreme Court last week demands voters in this state and on tribal lands present a valid ID with an actual street address. While that may sound like it's no big deal to you, here on the Standing Rock Reservation and tribal lands across North Dakota, the law is seen to have one purpose, keep Native Americans from voting. It, it is a very complicated problem because we don't, some reservations, they don't have street addresses. Majority of them don't have house numbers. So what, what they've been utilizing is a P.O. box. I mean, it's really hard for me to think that these are serious complaints. I don't know about you, but having a street name and street address and, and, and that's, the, that's the big conspiracy here to do voter suppression. Like, welcome to 1902. Margaret Landon, a Native American voting rights advocate, says just weeks before November's election, some Native Americans, her husband included, are scrambling to get new IDs just to vote. I still have that ID form right there. Okay. Niels Landon had no idea what his street address was. He had to call his county emergency coordinator to find out. So I got three First Avenue East is what they told me on the phone. The process did take just minutes, and he now yep. has a tribal ID. He will be able to vote. Did it cost anything? No fee. That's not the point, says wife Margaret. It's discriminating and disenfranchising to our people to not allow them to vote. And it's discouraging on top of that. So we've got this process that takes minutes where we're only trying to ask for an, uh, an address and a house number, and it's free. And they, they say it right in there that it's no fee and it only took just a few minutes. And it's discriminating for people to ask for a voter ID. Uh, it, 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 and it takes minutes. I mean, is that flying with you guys? Is that something that passes for a valid argument these days and something that can be called racist? It's really hard for me to believe that there's a people, a group of people out there saying, this is how we're going to get them, guys. This is how we're going to stop Native people from voting. We're going to make it so they have to spend five minutes and write down their house number and and that's how we're going to get them. Uh, the first thing that comes to my mind when I hear that you have to have, or that these people are voting using a P.O. box, is that anyone can just come from anywhere and open a P sign up for a P.O. box there, and then they can vote there. What if 20 people do that? What if 50 people do that? And depending on where it is, this could severely actually uh, cause some problems, especially in a small community. This could sway an election. So the hypocrisy I see here from leftists or Democrats and people like CNN and MSNBC is that we've been lectured for two years about the validity of an election because of outside interference, social media campaigns, and other people interfering with ballot boxes. They had a recount, as you recall. Jill Stein called for a recount. And so they complain about all that, but when it's brought up that you need just 
an ID that takes five minutes to get for free and to have an address, a physical address and house number, this is all of a sudden, this is unacceptable and this is discrimination. And you can't do anything without an ID. You can't buy alcohol, cigarettes, can't go to, you can't gamble. There's so many things you need a photo ID for getting into a bar. But it's discrimination to ask for it, to vote for who the leaders of your country are going to be. Laws across the U.S. are being passed to make it harder, not easier, to vote. Since the 2016 election, according to the Brennan Center for Justice at New York University, nine states with Republican state legislatures have passed laws restricting the vote. In Georgia, a law requiring an exact match of voter registration information has placed 53,000 mostly African-American voters on a pending list. In Arkansas, a new photo ID requirement goes into effect this election. And in Indiana, the state's use of a nationwide cross-check system to purge voter rolls was ruled a violation of the National Voter Registration Act. Why so many laws? Take a guess. In many places, like California, the same person votes many times. You probably heard about that. They always like to say, oh, that's a conspiracy theory. Not a conspiracy theory, folks. Millions and millions of people. You want our address to match our records, you fascists. May I remind you that there are people who have been bussed around. Project Veritas, perfect example. They had people on tape admitting that they were bussing people around and that it's been a common thing for many years to bust people from state to state. And in the last election, particularly the ones that were swing states, had people bussing around to vote in multiple states. And not only that, they had people voting illegally. There's a Washington Times article article, I believe it is, from last year, where they had a few thousand people illeg illegally registered to vote. So the hypocrisy from them about protecting voting is the first thing, because with that comes making it not stupidly easy for anyone to vote, or else anyone can just go vote. Can I, move, can I just travel down there during election season and vote, as long as I know one person's name on that list and I can impersonate them, because you don't have to ask for ID? If I could go down there, where can I say, John Washington or John Smith? There's probably going to be one of those, and I could probably vote. But the other thing I wanted to mention is something called bigot the bigotry of low expectations, sometimes called the soft bigotry of low expectations. And this is what it is. It essentially means that you have lower expectations of a person because of their race or their background. So basically you think that a person isn't smart enough to register to vote or is too poor to use the internet to register online or too uneducated to know how to vote. Something where you think that the person uh, lacks knowledge, money, or the ability to vote or to do anything in general based on who they are or what they look like. So by now you've probably seen the Ami Horowitz video, um, I'll link it to the description, about how he goes and asks liberals in California if they think voter ID laws are racist, and most of them say they do. They say uh, people are too poor to, buy, to get IDs, they don't know where the DMV is, they don't really know how to use the internet properly, which is crazy stuff. And then he goes to Harlem and asks black people if they have IDs, and all these crazy questions and these things that he heard, and they agree that they're crazy. They all know where the DMV is. All these people there, they know uh, they have their ID on them at all times. And, and then one kid says, of course, I know how to use the internet. That's just crazy that they would say that. So it's these this weird thing where on one hand you want to help people, but on the other hand you think they're t too stupid, poor, or, or lazy, or whatever it might be that they think that these people can't do it for themselves. For themselves, so that's the soft bigotry of low expectations. You want to help people, but at the same time, you don't think they're capable of helping themselves. And as we all know, with things like welfare or social services or um, giving money to people who live on reserves, th these types of hand-holding initiatives don't actually help people. They actually get people into a pattern of relying on the government. And whether you believe that that is something that people purposely want people to fall into the trap of. I'll leave that for you to decide. So I want to know what you think. So let me know below in the comments. Are voter ID laws racist or are they necessary for protecting an election? Is CNN doing the right thing here? Are they trying to help people or do they have another agenda here? Or are they exhibiting the soft bigotry of low expectations? Mm -hmm.